could have predicted what 2020 would be like? We went from this environment where we regularly gathered together under one roof to not seeing one another face to face for months with still no end in sight. But we're still here. We managed to come together and adapt and find new ways to connect. And I'm so proud of how the people of St. John's have taken this challenging time and turned it into a hopeful one. Together, we continue to pray, to grow, and to serve. Giving a homily to a camera is a lot different, or especially when I first started this, it was very different and difficult. Uh, now what I do is I just imagine you guys right in the camera lens. And so that has helped me um, as I deliver the sermon. So I know you're out there and I just, in my mind's eye, in my imagination, I just think of you. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 o'clock a.m. and you can access the service through uh, YouTube or Facebook or going to our website to find the link. In terms of what we're hearing from our parishioners about our virtual services, they really like the fact that uh, they can quote unquote go to church whenever they want. They like the fact that they don't have to dress up to go to church. Today's a special Sunday for us. What is difficult for our people is that as Episcopalians, we're used to participating in our worship a lot. We're used to standing and sitting and kneeling and responding uh, in our services of worship. So because our services are virtual, it's uh, less participative, and people are missing that. Amen. Well, I miss each and every one of you. I enjoy how we grow and learn together in our journey toward a more full spiritual life. And the fact that we do that together really testifies to the fact that we are a healthy family, and we're doing very well together. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. A lot of moving parts this morning. I love having the opportunity to volunteer. I got a background in IT. Plus, at a previous church, I used to be on the AV or tech team and help run a camera there. We're planning on doing these streaming services when we're back in the service, too, at least on Sundays. And I think that's great because with our Minnesota winters, there's a lot of folks that maybe don't want to drive on really snowy days or they're sick or maybe they're even snowbirds and they're down in Florida. And even though we're all in here, we can still be out there too. So this makes me think that as terrible as COVID is, if there are some good things that can come from it, this is one of them. Oh, one of my children basically came out as trans and I felt like she wouldn't be welcome at our previous church. So my other daughter and I looked at churches that would be welcoming. And at this time, um, I was going through my second battle with cancer and I thought, well, one of the most important things I can do if I'm gonna die soon was to find a home for all of my family where everybody would be welcome. I liked a lot of the liturgical aspects that were similar to Catholicism, but I also liked the fact that Episcopalianism is open to everybody. Everybody's invited. And then I talked to Father Art. Uh, he and I went out for lunch and I told him why I was looking at St. John's and he said, and I almost cried. He said, not only will your daughter be accepted here, she will be welcomed, encouraged, loved, and be a part of the family just like anybody else. And that just was exactly what I needed to hear because at that time I didn't know how long I had. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, that she had a place. Now, now, this daughter of mine hasn't really taken advantage of it other than coming to church once, but that's okay because she knows that when she's ready, St. John's is waiting for her.
Good morning, St. John in the Wilderness. This is Maureen. How may I help you? Being in the church now is interesting. I miss seeing parishioners more often. Uh, when we have dealings, they'll drop things in the entryway and I'll retrieve them at a later time. We're very serious here about social distancing and contact tracing and keeping everyone safe. The one thing that I really, really miss is Bible and breakfast. We would gather and cook a hot breakfast and discuss the readings of the day. Music to me is a way to connect with other people and a way to communicate. And when I'm playing the organ in church, it's not just me playing the music, it's other people singing as well. I miss the congregation so much because when I'm playing, I'm listening for voices, and my music combines with their music. And uh, to uh, combine those efforts is, I think, the beautiful thing about music. It means a lot to me to do that. I would like the congregation to know that they are in my heart as I'm here on Sundays playing the organ and when we do these live streaming services. Uh, that's who I'm playing for. Something I've heard from a few of you that uh, it does connect and that you appreciate it. So that means a lot to me. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hi. Do you have your coffee, Megan? I do. In my really? buffalo mug. So coffee hour is Sunday morning, 11 a.m. You know, coffee hour was always something at St. John's that um, people look forward to. My kids loved it because they got donuts and coffee. And it was just a place that we could gather after church to, to talk and to be together and just live life together outside of worship. Socialization relationships are key to normal living, but to also being the family, the church family, and, and being um, people of God together. We need to lift each other up. We need to cry with each other. We need to laugh with each other. We need to share funny stories with each other. And it's become just a place that anybody who wants to come and bring their coffee or their tea or their donuts and um, join us can do that. You don't have to come, you know, it's 11 to 12. You don't have to be there right at 11. If you join us at 11.30 or later, whenever you can, just pop in and say hi. We really love coming together in the church, but during this time, church has really moved into people's homes. My faith is meaningful, very meaningful to me. I have been doing Google Meet. I was doing the Bible study, the uh, Rector's Forum uh, Sunday evening. And also, I have the meetings with the bishop, uh, ECMN, on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock. I've been trying to do that. Members of our congregation, we can pray for each other even though we can't be together. The main thing I've been doing is the Sacred Ground Group. This group tries to address some of the underlying issues of racism that are kind of prevalent in our country. So we talk about their history, our ancestry, and what we can do to be anti-racist in our daily lives and in our faiths too, in our faith community. So, and then the other thing I've been doing is attending the outdoor services. Like I hadn't been to church in like four months and just going there and being part of a community where everyone's worshiping God and you're gathered in his name, that just really, I needed that like reset um, kind of for my faith. The outdoor services have been really helpful. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'll have to say one of the, the cooler things about Saturdays, Saturday night, there's so many people who are coming from the lake and walking by. We had one woman stop and take communion. I think we're more visible in the neighborhood now than we have been for a long time. It was so wonderful to see people again and to see the outside of the building. I mean, it was, I missed that. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from Saturday evil. night service, it lasts about half an hour, 45 minutes. Forever and ever. Amen. There is no singing of the congregation. We're all wearing masks. We're sitting about six to eight feet apart in lawn chairs. Um, very comfortable. And then we have a, what I call a simple communion service. We normally have the bread and the wine, but because of the COVID virus, we only share the bread. That was the piece that was, was really special and, and 
and reminded me that I was in church. St. John's is, is really my church family. My blood family is all back in Nebraska. Shout out for the Cornhuskers. So these people are my family here in Minnesota. I was one of those people that contracted the COVID virus. And these people here in this church were here to help me, to care for me, to make sure that I had food, toilet paper, paper towels. We care for each other. We're a family away from family. That's what these people are to me. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. We have a lot of new ideas for the fall that we're hoping that you will participate in. We have two tracks that we're offering in adult formation. The first track is a track that we're calling Topics Unlimited, and that will be offered every Sunday evening. That will start off with an introduction to world religions. Uh, that will run for six weeks, and then we're following that up with a four-week series on time as sacred. And finally, as we head into the Advent uh, season, uh, we're going to be looking at dementia through a spiritual lens. And then our second track is our Bible study, which will be offered every Wednesday night after evening prayer. And we have three different series that we're going to be offering in the fall. The first series is looking at the greatest stories of the Old Testament. So we're super excited about that. The second series will be uh, a walk through the book of James. And the third series will be looking at the coming Christ and, uh, and Advent and what that means for, for our lives. I also want you to know that the vestry, our, our leadership, has continued to meet throughout these challenging days. And they're continuing to make decisions for us in, the current, in, in our current environment, but also making plans as we head into the future and as we plan to be together, uh, hopefully in the winter or spring. We also have some people that we would like to introduce you to, like Kate Maxwell, our new transitional deacon here at St. John's. I'm just delighted to be here at St. John in the Wilderness, and I'm looking forward to meeting many of you soon. And we're also welcoming Margaret Thor, our new deacon here at St. John's. I am delighted to be back with you as your deacon. I'm excited about reacquainting myself with everyone here and to help you serve God in the world. I'm really looking forward to that. For the fall, for, for the youth, we're going to have the first Sunday or first week of every month is going to be, we're calling it Adventure Weekend or Adventure Sunday. And the person in charge of that is Father Art. The second Sunday of every month, 9th through 12th graders from 11 to 11.45 is going to be Maggie DeSmit. She's going to be having conversations and talking with the youth and about being anti-racist. From 11.45 to 12.15, I will be online, and this is all by Zoom, with grades six through eight, just having conversations, watching a few videos, and just being together. On the third Sunday of the month, it's the same thing for the sixth through eighth grade, 11.45 to 12.15, but that 11 to 11.45 spot on the third Sundays of the month is going to be with Dr. Lovett, being together, doing a deep dive into what it means to be Christian and what it means to grow our faith together. And then the fourth Sunday is going to be me, and I'm gonna need help from all the kids planning some sort of service project. We have lots of things planned for this fall. We're doing virtual Sunday school every other week, and it'll alternate live uh, versus just uh, a scripted Sunday school lesson. And then every other week, we're alternating in-person formation events with some adventure days, uh, meeting at Tamarack and Oakdale, and then in the winter, looking forward to playing out in the snow together. And of course, I'm always here to meet with you. You may contact me uh, via email or telephone or through the church office, and I have office hours Monday through Thursday as well. These are challenging times. Our businesses, our families, our schools, everything is having to, 
to change and so is the church to adapt to this, this new and, and difficult time that we're, we're living in. But we're hoping that you will still stay active with your parish family during these difficult times and we're uh, looking for ways right now to interact with you. And as we move into the future and, and after this pandemic, uh, I'm excited about the future, and I hope you are getting excited too. We'll be a different church when we come out of here, but I'm excited to see what God does with us. So thank you for continuing to be a part of our parish family here at St. John in the Wilderness. You know, I miss everyone, but it's kind of nice to be able to get some of this deep cleaning done. <laughs> <laughs>